Jamé Mask of Isfahan in Iran. In the heart of Isfahan, Iran, stands the Jamé Mask, a testament to the enduring fusion of faith and architectural, brilliant spanning over a millennium. The first mosque was constructed on this location in or around 771. Under the Caliph Almansa of the Abbasids, this first structure was only 52 by 90 meters, which was a modest size. It was constructed in the Syro-Mesopotamian style of Abbasid architecture using mud bricks and stucco embellishment. When the current mosque was being studied in the 1970s, its remnants were dug up. The mask was then replaced in 840 to 841 under al mutasim s reign by a larger one, 88 by 128 meters in size. This new structure featured a different Qibla orientation than the previous one. It included a sizable central courtyard supported by a flat roof or a roof made of brick vaults as well as an arcade and hypostyle hall made of baked brick pillars. The hypostyle hall had a depth of two bays on its sides, four bays on its northwest facing side, and six bays on its Qibla facing side, which housed the main prayer hall. The aisle that led to the mirab of the mask was marginally broader than the remaining aisles. In front of the pre-existing courtyard for Cardes, a second arcade of polylobed brick piers was constructed around the courtyard during the Bayad dynasty 10th-11th century. The additional additions were embellished with geometric designs resembling the brickwork found in other Bayadera monuments including as zigzags, diamond forms and circles in place of the previous stucco decoration. Although the precise date of this refurbishment is unknown, some scholars place it in the late 10th century, around 975. Oleg Graybar bases his estimate on historical source descriptions of the mask, placing it between 985 and 1040, 47 at the mask's entrance next to the dyer's market, to further minuets were erected. Each one was constructed on top of a pedestal or base construction and stood on either side of the entryway, the double minaret configuration, which subsequently spread throughout Iran and beyond, is regionally known to have existed in this manner. The Seljuks provided sponsorship for the mask's subsequent significant renovations after its capture in 1050. Isfahan was designated as the first capital of the Seljuk Empire the Seljuks made changes to the hypostyle building's rather egalitarian and homogeneous design. In 1086 to 1087, they replaced the columns in front of the mirab, which is located on the mask's south side, with a sizable domed area. This was carried out with the support of Nizam al-Mulk, the well-known Malik Shavizia at the time. The new dome was the biggest masonry dome in the Islamic world. 49 it is supported by enormous piers and has eight ribs. It also offered a novel form of squinch that was quickly imitated in other masks. It consisted of a barrel vault position that buffed a quarter domes. This was the first instance of the Mukhanas technique, which at this time was growing into a three-dimensional geometrical composition of niches. 53 to 54 it's possible that the dome was designed to function as a maxura, a place set aside for the Sultan and his guests during prayer. Rival Nizam al-Mulk Taj al-Mulk built another dome on the mask's north side in 1088 to 1099. This dome chamber's purpose is unknown. It was outside the mask's walls even though it was positioned along the north-south axis. The dome is regarded as a masterwork of Iranian medieval architecture. The North Dome is a major technical and artistic achievement since it features interlacing ribs that form pentagons 
and five-pointed star patterns throughout, in contrast to Nizam Almok's simpler atrib dome. The chamber's lower walls appear lighter and more graceful, and the various wall and dome features are better positioned vertically to draw the eye outward. Mukana's squinches are again used for the transition of the dome to the square chamber, 53 to 54. Early in the 12th century, the mask underwent yet another significant phase of change, most likely following fire damage disdained in 1121 to 22. It is unclear exactly when this shift occurred or how it fits into history, 55 to 58, it was most likely completed before 1230, at the latest, when the Mongol invasions would have put an end to any significant building projects. 57 The columned area between the dome and the courtyard was rebuilt with a sizable E1, a vaulted hall open to one side, to improve the access to the Mirab's dome chamber, which stood alone within the previous hypostyle hall. This spacious hall features a barrel vaulted ceiling that opens to the courtyard on one side and connects to the domed hall via a doorway on the opposite end. Three additional colossal E1s were built by the builders to balance it out at the centre of each side of the courtyard. It's possible that the northern E1 was the last to be constructed. 56. The mask's current 4 E1 structure is the consequence of these changes, and this layout style later spread throughout Iran and other Islamic countries. The courtyard's southern E1, which leads to the Mirab, stood out from the others due to its size, and elaborate decoration featuring numerous layers of mucanas. Even though they were constructed at roughly the same period, the E1s today have distinct aesthetics due to the addition of various mucanus compositions at various points in time 65 to 66. The remaining bays of the former hypostyle halls were remodeled with cross-ribbed vaults in addition to the construction of four E1s. There are about 200 of these smaller vaults and they all have a wide range of geometric decoration in unique styles. Although the exact dates of the various vaults repairs and renovations are unknown, a significant portion of this work was most likely completed in the late 11th or early 12th century. It's uncertain if the earlier minarets of the mask were preserved until this time, but no historical texts make reference to them after the mid-11th century. The Jame mask invites contemplation of the intertwined narratives of human endeavor and spiritual devotion transcending mere architectural splendor to serve as a profound symbol of Iran's cultural heritage. In essence, it stands as a living testament to the enduring legacy of faith, art, and human aspiration, beckoning visitors to delve deeper into its storied past and contemplate the timeless themes that unite us all. Report by Rafsin Hazen Thanks for watching.